Well, welcome, Whitney, to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast for a second a second time to chat with you, which is really lovely to have you back. Thanks, Annabelle. It's so good to be here. I've been very excited about this for a while. Yeah, me too. And look, if you're listening to this and you haven't listened to the first conversation I had with Whitney, which I can tell you is episode 40, uh, it is all about gluten. Like, do we really need to make a big fuss about gluten when we've got yes. Hashimoto's hypothyroidism? <laughs> and yeah, yes, gosh, I can't even yes, get we do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yes, we do. And you need to go listen to that episode. It's been wildly helpful for lots of people. I get feedback on that episode and I refer people to it often who are debating or yeah. you know, need that little bit of extra push to go gluten-free. So there's actually quite a few, and I've done earlier on than that, a few episodes on how to go gluten-free, but if you really want the why do you have to, it's not negotiable. Right. <laughs> um, and why, then you need to listen to our conversation episode 40. So uh, so I'm excited to have you back, Whitney. We're not going to talk, well, I mean, maybe gluten will come up, I'm sure it will in this topic, because we're going to talk all about root causes. Yes. And uh, I think that is a really important conversation to have because, um, well, I don't know, you tell me, Whitney, <laughs> why do we need, what, what, why do we need to be, or do we need to even consider like what the root cause of our Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism is? Is that important? Well, yeah, it really is. But but let me just kind of backtrack to a really simple um, example. Now, before I get Whitney to answer that question and we dive right into all these root cause exploration, I want to remind you of a couple of things. One, I have a new website, which is called letstalkthyroid.com. So that is the easiest place to go find all things Let's Talk Thyroid, book, podcast, Thyroid Box, Kickstart Program, and Strategy Session, all available through there. Number two, it is Christmas coming up, so you might want to start to think about any thyroid friends in your circle that you might like to buy a book for or uh, a thyroid box, or if it's maybe you, you might want to start to think about whether you'd like to, you know, try the Kickstart Program perhaps even in the lead up to Christmas or definitely in January, February, start to think about those options. And the third thing is if you listen to this podcast and get some benefit from it, I would love to ask a favor. Can you share it with a friend? Can you interact with me on social media? Hit the like buttons, maybe comment on some of my posts. It really helps. The social media algorithms are just horrible at the moment, uh, particularly for anything health related. So if you can, um, yeah, just hit the like button or add a comment, uh, ask a question. Does, it's just that interaction and it's just so helpful because I know, for example, even in my Let's Talk Thyroid community, the Facebook group, there's well over 1,100 people in the group and be rarely, most posts rarely reach like a couple of hundred. And so I know that's because social media doesn't really like health oriented information. Uh, they think that, I don't know what they think, but it really is hard. To, you can't really advertise on social media easily. Uh, so those little interactions, the likes, the comments make a massive, massive difference. So if you could do that, really appreciate it. Of course, a, an iTunes podcast review is super helpful. All of those feedback to let other people and the algorithms to know that this information is helpful to you and probably then to other people goes further than you realize. And I would be ever so grateful. When we think about, well, what is a root cause and why does it matter? So let's take headaches, for example. Everyone gets headaches, pretty common occurrence all the time. We've all done it. And nine times out of 10, what, you'll take a Tylenol or an ibuprofen, Advil, but you don't have a headache because you have a Tylenol deficiency or an Advil deficiency, right? The headache is coming from something else. So the medication takes away the symptom, but it doesn't alter what's driving your headache in the first place. And usually those are very simple things like dehydration or caloric restriction, uh, mental, emotional stress. You had a crappy night's sleep the night before, mm. um, or you're overworking yourself. You know, these are five very, very common 
causes of headaches. So what if you didn't take that Tylenol and you drank a big glass of water and waited 15 minutes to see what would happen? So it's, it's, it's just that different perspective mm, of yeah. asking, well, how do I get rid of this? That's one question. But the other question is, well, why is this happening? Yeah. And we're so often, I mean, I suppose you and I, like we're, we kind of in this space, we've got thyroid conditions. We, you know, kind of work with people that do, we kind of live and breathe this, but in a lot of other, you know, health conditions and people don't think about root causes, do they? We kind of right. very quick to, yeah, I don't like the way I feel. How can I stop feeling like this rather than sure. what's making me feel like this? And sure. how do I address that? <laughs> how do we dig yeah. deep, deep, deep? Yeah. yeah. And it's not an either or proposition. You can do both. Mm. You can yeah. take that Tylenol and have a big glass of water. I mean, it's not like one way is bad and the other way is good. It's just mm -hmm. that we kind of need to be looking at all of those health issues from that holistic vantage point where we're coming at it from both perspectives. Mm. That's my opinion. So yeah. Yeah. So when it, so when we put the thyroid layer on that, like what does it mean then to find, well, what is a root cause or how do we, yeah. Um, yeah. Often we'll say you need to find your root cause or causes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Sure. Well, so when it comes to now, I, I deal predominantly with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. Yeah. So 99% of the time, most women, I, most of my clients are women, most women do require some level of thyroid hormone replacement. So thyroid medication. Yeah. And that thyroid medication, kind of like that Tylenol, is, is more of a fast track to, to helping us feel better sooner, um, helping us have more energy and more libido and, you know, less constipation, things like that. But no amount of medication is going to solve any of those root causes. So, for instance, when we think about hypothyroidism, and that's just a sluggish thyroid that has no autoimmune component to it, right? Well, there are a few pretty typical root causes. Uh, nutritional deficiencies is a big one. And then chronic stress, or what in the functional world we call HPA axis dysfunction. That's the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. It's our stress response system. It pumps out all those great stress hormones, right, that enables yeah. us to deal with the stress in our life. But when that system is really upregulated and we're pumping out a lot of cortisol, that spills over to the thyroid system and it drives down TSH, drives down thyroid hormone. It also inhibits conversion of T4 to T3, and it can make our cell receptors less sensitive to thyroid hormone. So when stress goes on too long to the point of, of really um, stressing out your adrenals, you know, mm. then that can cause hypothyroidism. So one of the easiest things to do to try and bring that thyroid back online, if that's your root cause, is to support adrenal health and do all the things that we know how to do to kind of um, combat what we've been um, doing to our adrenals. And in the mm. case of nutrient deficiencies, it's usually B vitamins and zinc and selenium and magnesium. Um, those are some of the big ones. Yeah. And for a lot of women, the way that they get these chronic nutrient deficiencies is because of pharmaceutical medications and also um, processed food, like a sad diet, you know, your typical um, sad American diet. But um, birth control pills is a big trigger, right? So mm. women who take birth control pills, it's usually a 5 to 15 year thing. You'll wind up with these chronic nutrient deficiencies that ultimately mm. will impact your thyroid because you don't have the building blocks for all the yeah. things that you need to mm. produce the hormone and convert the hormone. Right. So hypothyroidism is a little bit easier to 
deal with because the root causes tend to be just a few, a handful of things. Yeah. And is, is, does, you know, sort of age decline as well, like in general thyroid function, does that play into it in terms of hypothyroidism, just sort of aging and menopause? Does that play a role at all? Sure. Um, menopausal fluctuations, uh, pregnancy fluctuations yep. too. Um, mm -hmm. We are much more uh, sensitive creatures hormonally than our male counterparts. And so all those nuances can definitely play a role. Uh, but so can things like uh, gut dysfunction. So if you've got gut inflammation um, or you've got some bacterial overgrowth in your gut or you've got, if your liver is overburdened with toxins and these could just be toxins like alcohol and all the chemicals in your makeup and your hair dye and all those things we yep. get exposed to. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if your gut and your liver are underperforming, then it's really hard for you to convert your T4 into T3, and then you wind up with hypothyroidism. But it's not due to your thyroid. It's due to some dysfunction and imbalance in your gut and in your liver. Yeah. Yeah. The, the more I understand about thyroid health, the, the more I understand that thyroid problems aren't problems with the thyroid. Mm -hmm. Really, and That's I know right. we're about to sort of dive into the autoimmune, which is which is another case in point. But you know, we think, and I, you know, talk, talk thyroid health, thyroid health, thyroid health. But probably when I'm talking about that, and I probably need to be clearer, like it's not just about the health of your thyroid gland. It's really right. how everything else in your body impacts on the thyroid. And so, yes. yeah, I think when we're talking about all these root causes, it's helpful because it helps us to understand that the problem that we have with thyroid health is so many more things than just the thyroid gland function yeah. itself. Yes. Whether Absolutely. we're talking straight out hypothyroidism or autoimmune, you know, Hashimoto's. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and with this Hashimoto's, layer and course, layer of onion. Yeah. <laughs> with Hashimoto's, so, as you know, it's more complex. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that then. Yeah, you know, we've sure. sort of gone over some of the key um, the key things for hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. and I suppose one of the causes for hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's, <laughs> one of those root causes. But what's the sure. root causes of Hashimoto's? So, do you want to highlight a few of those key things? Yeah. Well, Hashimoto's is first and foremost a disease of the immune system. Right? Mm -hmm. And the location where it's taking place is the thyroid. Yeah. So autoimmune triggers in general kind of have similarities across the board, no matter what autoimmune disease you're talking about. Um, now, certainly all the things that we talked about with hypothyroidism can contribute to Hashimoto's for sure. So that those things need to be on your list for Hashimoto's too. But then the big one, um, of course, is gluten. Right, gluten is one of the main triggers of a thyroid dysfunction um, and celiac disease. So whether you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, those are two pretty big triggers. Um, having a leaky gut will set you up for thyroid dysfunction. And then cross-reactive food sensitivities. So there are foods that cross-react with gluten that the immune system can mistake, say, corn or cow dairy or millet, can mistake those foods for gluten. So even if you go gluten-free, but you're still eating these cross-reactive foods to which you're sensitive, that can be a trigger for Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. And then there are toxins, right? So uh, heavy metals, environmental toxins, mycotoxins, and then specifically some organisms like H. pylori and um, Citrobacter, Klebsiella, these are different bacteria in the gut, Prevotella, and then even some chronic viruses like EBV is, is a known trigger, Epstein-Barr mm -hmm. virus. And I'm actually seeing um, COVID as a trigger. Oh, yeah. That's what I see among my clients. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that. 
Mm-hmm. I think there's some research that, I, I, yeah, I've, I've been hearing that too. And I, I've, I haven't gone digging into the yeah. studies, but I think they, they'll, they'll come out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I've had at least five clients that they were, they were feeling fine, you know, like really working their program and, and, and living in a state of quasi remission, then mm-hmm. got COVID and antibodies skyrocketed, all of their symptoms were back with a vengeance. Mm. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that can take yeah. a while to climb out of. Mm. Well, when you think that viruses generally can be a trigger, it's no great surprise, is it? That right. <laughs> COVID's a virus, so yeah. Sure. It could be a trigger too. Yeah, and I think that what Lyme you disease. just said is... Ah, Lyme disease yeah, can okay. also be a trigger for, for Hashis, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, so one of the, we might come back to this, but one of the things I think you just said is important is that these triggers aren't just about triggering the start of it. They can re-trigger, you know, um, it's not just, it's a trigger and that's what set, set us up for say Hashimoto's, but, and this is probably why it is important to go looking for or doing your best job to try to figure out what you're individual root causes are because they can re-trigger yes. as you, you know, as we go throughout our life. Stress, I was just saying before we hit record, like my thyroid had been, like I had, you know, pretty much put everything into remission the first time my antibodies were below kind of normal range earlier in the year. In the last few months, it's just gone a bit crazy again. And as best as I can work out, because I haven't, I mean, I had COVID earlier in the year. I've um, I, I, I did have another virus sort of in the last sort of end of June, just some sort of coldy something. I don't know what it was sure. <laughs> exactly, but a virus, but just some low grade stress. My husband had foot surgery. So, you know, he was in a cast and on crutches yeah. and like, it wasn't life threatening by any stretch, but all of a sudden he can't carry his plate to the dishwasher. <laughs> you know, there's a whole lot oh, of, there's sure. just a lot of, you know, lots of little low grade stress. And I were, I think for me, stress is a trigger a yeah. big trigger. And even though some of those things in my head, I think, ah, oh, that's not a big deal. Like I can intellectually cope with all of those things. My body says, ah, oh, no, Annabelle, <laughs> actually this is, you know, we're struggling. My body here is struggling a bit more. And, and now I know that, or am reminded of that. And it's a constant reminding often, isn't it? Yeah. We kind of think we got through something, but it's a, it's okay. All right. I really have to be constantly managing my stress yes. and how I unwind. And I know that, but it's a good reminder to really know that, you know, it on different levels. So I think that was a, a good point that you made that it, these tri- these triggers can re-trigger. Absolutely. And stress, that's, that's kind of its, its own little complicated thing because when we think of stress, most people think of, okay, mental, emotional stress. I have stress at work. I've got stress with my teenage daughter or, or yeah, there's an injury in the family and life has to change, um, loss of a job, things that are, you know, pretty obvious, mm. but other things like, Hey, a couple of nights of bad sleep, mm. that's a stressor. Um, over exercise is a big stressor for people with Hashimoto's mm-hmm. and that can mm-hmm. send you into a flare. Mm. Um, so can under exercise, right? So we have to think of stress in terms of, I think, physical, chemical, mm. and mental, emotional, yeah. and, and, and try and keep our eye on all of those. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, uh, I think just re- remembering that our thyroid is a sensitive little gland, you know, yes, it and is. so any little stress, when we think of it, we talk about it, it's butterfly shaped and, you know, I think it's a good reminder, butterflies are delicate, you know, that doesn't take, wouldn't take much to kind of damage a butterfly, they are little yeah. delicate things and so I think that is a good, sure. whilst it's shaped like a butterfly, it is a good reminder, at least to me, who tends to just sort of go at things a bit you know, hell for ever, you know, that it is, it is delicate. And I think that often comes with, well, you know, that kind of thyroid personality we're driven and we, you know, like to achieve and do, and we push through and we carry everybody else's burdens and, you know, and 
it just goes with that territory, doesn't it? So just the more we're aware of that, the more we can, yeah, tune, yep. tune in I and agree. make some changes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So if someone's listening to this and they've, you know, maybe reasonably newly diagnosed or maybe they've known they've been taking thyroid medication for 20 years and, you know, that's all they've done because that's all they've been told to do, which is a very common scenario, where would someone start to Mm -hmm. figure out their root causes? Sure. Well, first, medication is, like I said, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. um, Many women need to be on some form of thyroid medication just ongoing, and that's okay. The important thing is to leverage that medication so you get the biggest benefit out of it, right? Because medication alone isn't going to address those root causes and it's not going to eliminate all your symptoms either. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a common misconception that that people think, oh, okay, well, if I get on the right dose, this whole laundry list of symptoms I have are just going (laughs) to disappear. And it's really frustrating because it doesn't tend to happen that way. That's Um, true. So first thing is, let's make sure the medication you're on is clean, right? So a lot of different thyroid meds contain gluten or corn, and those can be dietary triggers for Hashimoto's. So you want to make sure that you're talking with your doctor about trying to get the cleanest uh, hormone replacement options for you. In my experience, oftentimes that means going to a compounded product from a compounding pharmacy Uh Mm -hmm. or switching to one of the glandulars that are really clean, like WP thyroid or Priority One uh, or Thyrogold. These are glandulars that just don't have all those extra filler ingredients that tend to be grain-based, right? Uh So that's the first thing. Make sure you're on good Mm -hmm. medication that's working for you. Um, and then the other question is, all right, are you going to work with a practitioner, an alternative practitioner, like a functional practitioner or a health coach, or are you going to do this on your own? Right. So there are scenarios for both choices. (laughs) Sorry. I'm kind of laughing because one of the options wasn't work with your, you know, conventionally trained doctor. (laughs) Well, not so much for root causes. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing because I think that's what yeah. they're not, they're not trained in that. So I just like that. Yeah, that's not, it's not a, a realistic option in, no, it, in, the, it's in not, the most part. Correct. It's not part of that paradigm. And that's, that's mm. not necessarily a bad thing. Conventional doctors are really, really good at what they do. And, yeah. and they work well within their scope of practice. We need them to manage thyroid disorders and autoimmune disorders, but we also need adjunctive assistance as well. And Mm -hmm. either we get that on our own through research and reading and gaining knowledge, or we work with an experienced practitioner that kind of knows the lay of the land, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. So which option would you like to talk about first? Well, why don't we talk about, the, the working with the functional practitioner first. Okay. Okay. Well, first, it's really important to make sure, in my opinion, that um, you're doing your due diligence. Mm-hmm. So there's a difference between a health coach and a functional practitioner. Functional practitioners uh, tend to have access to the kind of lab tests that really help us get that hard data that's specific to you Mm -hmm. so we can see what's living in your gut, what foods are provoking your immune system, what toxins are taxing your liver. So we can really find those things out, that hard data. So given the choice between the two, I would always opt for a practitioner that is experienced with functional lab tests and knows how Mm -hmm. to evaluate, knows which ones you need. Yeah. And then beyond that, um, unfortunately, social media is saturated with folks like us, right? I mean, we're we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Um, Health coaches, functional practitioners, um, gurus, whatever, they're they're all over social media. Some of them really know their stuff. Some of them are more like 
the influencer category and it's mm -hmm. really hard to tell the difference. Mm. So when you're, if that's your main way of kind of figuring out who do I want to see or reach out to, if you're scrolling through Instagram to get that information, don't just rely on Instagram or Facebook. Make sure you go to their website. Make sure you review it thoroughly. See mm -hmm. if they have some, I would prefer video testimonials from previous clients. Um, see what their credentials are. How mm -hmm. long have they been? Be, how, how long have they been in business? Um, what kind of cred do they have? Basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then create your sh short list from there. Mm. Um, once you're working with a functional practitioner, then that's that kind of takes on a life of, of its own. Uh, the process yeah. is usually, hey, we're going to figure out what labs do you need. We're going to run the labs. We're going to look at the data. and We're going to develop a customized protocol so that we can eliminate all of these root causes we've identified and start to reverse engineer your symptoms and the autoimmune progression. Yeah. So do, um, do you think then if, if people are working with a functional practitioner, do they, I know COVID sort of meant a lot of people are working online with people. Do you, do you see that as a, as that a valid option? Like you don't have to even be in the same city, town, country, like is that sort of the long distance, can that work? It can. And in fact, I, I think it's the standard practice more now than ever before. Mm -hmm. There are some drawbacks, for instance, um, I only work with people in the States uh, because I can't get the labs that I want yeah. shipped, yep. you know, so, so there are some restrictions depending on geography, but Practitioners like us are everywhere. They're in lots of different mm. countries. So yeah. um, you might want to start looking geographically in your country um, yeah. just so you have the ease of getting what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I often look at some of the tests that I know, some of the tests that you run and talk about. I think, oh, we can't access that here in Australia. And so exactly. there are definitely some differences. And, and I would say here, and I'm, I might not be completely right about this, but I would say that uh, some of what you would call a functional practitioner, we would call a naturopath, like a naturopath mm -hmm. here. And I'm not saying you don't have naturopaths, but I think at least in my experience, I would go to a naturopath for what you're describing. They can yes. access the, you know, the blood tests, the labs. Um, I'm not sure that the, that the, functional practitioner label is so much used here in Australia. So if you're listening to Got this, it, yeah. you know, in different parts of the world, you're going to have to do a little bit of your own research yeah. as to what the type of practitioner is called in yeah. your location. And I think the UK is different again. So, um, sure. yeah. So just, if you're listening, just know that, but, but I think that advice is really helpful because one of the things I talk about is building your support team yes. and having those people and yeah, having a con, a conventional or a, or a, you know, like a, a medical doctor is important. You need that for medication. Yeah, you if you need medication, um, it's not an either or it's, it's a both. And I yeah. like to have a number of different people on my health team. Um, and the way you've gone about describing how to find someone in this sort of approach is really helpful because I mean, do you see that functional practitioners, that's a core part of what they you do is to find, help people find those root causes? Like if someone was just going to a functional practitioner, would you assume that they're going to help you to do that? That would be my basic assumption. Yeah. If they're truly a functional practitioner, then, then yeah, because that, that really is functional medicine is root cause medicine. That's what it's uh -huh. all about, right? Getting yeah. to the root cause so that we can prevent disease from happening. It's about optimal mm. health, right? And building mm. that from the ground up. So it really is um, a discipline of investigation. Uh, one thing that I want to, because you mentioned, you know, the importance of having medical professionals on your team. I absolutely agree with you. And unfortunately, I think maybe you've noticed this, but there's something kind of broken in the health coaching industry and that there seems to be a real schism between conventional medicine, 
and alternative medicine, like an us versus them sort of tension, right? Where mm. alternative practitioners spend time denigrating or dissing the medical doctors and, and perhaps even vice versa, which in the long run doesn't serve our clients, mm. right? Because it puts them in an impossible situation. So I love it when my clients have naturopathic doctors on their team, maybe even a general practitioner, just a straight up MD. What I try and do is counsel them to how to approach your doctor when you're, when you're thinking about bringing someone like me onto your team, mm -hmm. right? So that yeah. they can develop yeah. the most collaborative, supportive team mm. where we're all working towards the same objectives using our different yeah. skill sets. Mm. But yeah. the patient slash client is the team captain. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I love that collaborative idea. Mm -hmm. And years ago, I said, there's got to be a place for, so if you're listening to this and this sounds like you, there's got to be a place for someone. And I think they probably medically qualified in a broad sense to be, to be like the go between for people, because people are managing all sorts of different people on the health teams. And if you've got complex yeah. medical things going on, you're probably dealing with a variety of medical specialists. And, you know, imagine if there was, someone to help you um, draw all of that together and work together. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think there's got to be a place for someone like to be that sort of health. I don't even know what they are. Not quite an advocate, but a bit like an advocate that go, like maybe goes with on. you. Yeah, liaison. Yeah. Like I think yeah. there's a role for that. So if you're listening yeah, and you start a business, <laughs> well, we're <perfect> with you. <laughs> it's not me because, I, you know, I don't have that, that medical background, but you know, I can really see, you think, oh, I wish, I wish this person was listening to that person. And yeah, that, so yes, whilst we have to be, yeah, the captain of our own medical team, a hundred percent. Sometimes I think, yeah, it's, it would be nice to have someone to bounce those ideas off that that's across all of the, your other, you know, your whole yeah. health. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah know, that would we've be got great. our pipe dreams, don't we? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> and so Whitney, when people are coming to a functional practitioner like you, like what are the, what are the sort of tests? We'll, we'll talk in a minute about can you go it alone, <laughs> but like um, what what are the tests when we're looking at root causes and we're trying to understand what's sitting behind our Hashimoto's or our hypothyroidism because we want to improve that whole picture and we don't we want to avoid re -trigger, re triggering flares. What sort of tests or investigations do you do or can can be done? Sure. Well, one of the first things I do is a comprehensive thyroid evaluation because most clients that come to me, the tests that I see are, are very limited, like the ones that were ordered by their doctors. They just don't have all of the, the markers that give you the full picture. So that's the first thing. And mm -hmm. then always looking at adrenal and hormone balance for that reason I was talking about earlier, everything that happens on that stress pathway impacts the thyroid. So you need to see how those two things work together. So a really good adrenal and hormone assessment. And then the gut is key. Looking at, do you have a leaky gut? What organisms are living in your gut? Parasites, bacteria, and yeast, uh, generalized inflammation. And then there can be things that you're lacking in your gut. Certain commensal flora, short chain fatty acids, certain metabolites, so getting a real good lay of the land of that environment, that ecosystem, right? The gut ecosystem is really important um, because, boy, do we identify a lot of potential triggers there. And right. some great work can be done. And as goes the gut, so goes the rest of the body, mm. right? If you can get that gut work done right, so much can clear up. You can get huge benefits. Now, part of that gut work also is food sensitivity testing because that's mm -hmm. what we're running through our yep. gut every day, right? Yep. So it really mm -hmm. impacts the environment. So we need to look at that. And then, of course, the liver is, is important. So not only is it functioning in an optimal way, but does it have some 
some burden, some toxic burden that is building up. So we're looking mm -hmm. for things, first, heavy metals and environmental toxins, but sometimes we need to look at mycotoxins, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are some other odds and ends like the chronic viral infections that I was talking about, sometimes HSV uh, and then EBV, um, chronic Lyme. Those are a little bit different, but I, I tend to go to three big buckets first. I go to adrenals, yeah. gut, and toxicity. Okay. Because there's yep. so much that you can that you can get there. Mm. Above all that, we're also making sure that your nutrient profile is adequate. Because like mm -hmm. I was saying, so many vitamin and mineral deficiencies will contribute to both hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. Yeah. So, you know, this could be anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 worth of lab work. Uh-huh. Okay. And none of this is covered by insurance, right? So, yeah, right. So yeah, it, yeah. It's it probably really the same here. Investment. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big investment. Yeah. Um, and then from that data comes the customized healing strategies for the client. Mm -hmm. Dietary yeah. changes, lifestyle changes, strategic supplementation, mm -hmm. um, and then monitoring along the way. And that process is a journey, uh, usually yeah. six months or longer to kind mm -hmm. of dig yourself out of that hole. Mm. And would you recommend doing all of that testing at once if you could afford it? Or is there any benefit in, from a health perspective, and we can come back to a financial sure. perspective, but from a health perspective, is there any benefit in sort of spreading it out? Or would you just recommend go hard, go like, get, you know, just like get the full kind of picture yeah. all at once? Well, there is an argument to be made for spreading it out. Um, I always look at thyroid and gut first, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a stool test, we're doing food sensitivity, and we're doing a complete thyroid panel. Now, that usually ends up producing anywhere from a 60 to 120 day gut protocol. Uh -huh. So just going through that work can change your toxic burden on your liver, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. so maybe delaying the toxicity mm -hmm. testing a little bit mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. can't really go after, but you really need to clean up the gut first before you start going after heavy metals and these really big, bad toxins. Otherwise uh -huh. people can wind up feeling pretty crappy. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make sense to go in phases. Mm. Um, but I'll tell you where, where you can kind of get stuck is those clients who might be all gung-ho in the beginning, but then they lose steam and then you don't get those final tests. It's like pulling, you know, hair to get, uh -huh. to get that toxicity uh -huh. test done. So if you're going to do a delay, just make sure you really are in it for the long haul because it, because it is a journey. It's not a, mm. it's not an eight week fix. It's not a three month <laughs> fix. Right? No, it's a lifeline. That's why I go bang on about it. It's That's a right. lifestyle. It's we're in it for the, for, for life. You know, That's we right. are in this for, and obviously there are periods where there's intense healing and yes. protocols and investigation. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean for a minute we're in that for life, but you know, that it's, it's a journey and we, we never, yeah stop even in remission like we've got to be you know we're, we're still wanting to not re-trigger and we yeah. still got to be monitoring our health and living that thyroid friendly lifestyle so yeah that's right i think you say we you've got i think that some of the mindset is when we're when you die when we're you know maybe not like immediately diagnosed but early on i think it is helpful to really try to grasp this is forever and, and instead of seeing that as an overwhelming, oh my gosh, my life's so terrible and miserable, I've got to live with this forever, see it as that's okay because I don't have to do all this at once. This is going that's to right. take time. That's right. You know, we, I've got plenty. I don't have to deal with it all at once because that's too overwhelming. Let's just deal with the, you know, yeah, get some good bang for your buck first off. <laughs> yep. And then you'll actually probably feel better and then you're actually more willing to go, right, now I can dig into the, you know, 
the the toxicity or the what whatever there's different yeah mm-hmm. it's see it as a positive that's what I sort of try to talk about and I like that approach that you say yeah and sometimes we, if you yeah. do all the tests at once and you get all the data at once that can be very overwhelming mm-hmm. and kind of fry the brain you know to see all that coming at you mm-hmm. and there can be a tendency for some practitioners to overwhelm their clients with like every supplement under the sun, Uh Mm -hmm. right? Which in and of itself can become a real stressor, Mm -hmm. right? So (laughs) it's not good to stress out your client with too many supplements. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, obviously, so a lot of that's individual. Some people will want to know all the information all at yes. once and others won't, or some can afford yep. it, some can't. So, and what right. if you can't even, like, you know, let's now talk then about the person who, for whatever reason, needs to or wants to kind yes. of manage this on their own. Is there a path for them? Can they access any of these testing? What, what do they do? Yeah. Well, first, um, I would say get educated. Right. There's some great uh, resources out there. Your book is a great resource to have on your on your bookshelf. I think so. (laughs) Thank you. I think so. It's a good Um, basic. It's a good it's a good basics. Yeah. And that but that's what we need, right? We need easy reads, we need good basic information, the foundations. And I also like the paleothyroid solution by L. Russ which is a, yep. a, another easy read. And then uh, Root Cause by Isabella Wentz. That's, yep. that's great, like a little Bible. Yep. So get a few books from people you can trust, people mm-hmm. you know who know their shit, right? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and read them and take notes and, and educate yourself. So that's the first thing. Um, what I would say is, we all have to Google sometimes, but Google is not a health coach. Google isn't a doctor. Google isn't an electrician. You can't rely on Google for these big heavy lift tasks. So please don't use Google as your primary resource for trying to get your health back. Um, and then again, I spoke to the Instagram influencers. You got to be very cautious there. Mm-hmm. Uh, One thing that I'm super excited about is a colleague of mine and I, Paula Reed, she has her own business called Paula Reed Wellness. She's a functional practitioner like myself. We've known each other for years. We're both clinical advisors for the Association of Functional Diagnostic Practitioners. Uh, So, you know, and and we're friends. Uh, You know, we we really work well together. Uh, She's wicked smart and we're both just nerds. We're data nerds. So we decided that there was this vacuum of, hey, you know, women who want to work with us, but they can't invest that amount of money. So where do they go? They go to Google. They go to this Mm -hmm. blog. They go to this, you know, they, they just jump in all these different directions and try and DIY their health and end up getting frustrated. So we've created a community called the Functional Health Alliance, and it is free. You can join it. Uh, Just go to www.functionalhealthalliance.com and ask to join. And we've designed it to be kind of like that number one root cause wellness hub where you can work on your health with the Mm. guidance of experienced and seasoned functional practitioners. And it's a private space. We have um, challenges that we do, seven-day challenges, 21-day challenges. I have a little dance challenge I do. Uh, (laughs) We've got some courses in there. We've got some thyroid courses, some gut wellness Mm -hmm. courses. But we're in this um, community every day, answering questions, showing up. Mm. We have live Q&A sessions twice a month, and we even offer private little – mini office hours, coaches office hours, kind of like when your mm-hmm. teacher would have office hours and you uh, go yeah, in yeah, for 15 yeah. minutes when you had yeah, a couple have of a questions. Quick, a power session, a quick yeah. power session. Just, yeah, like that. Just like that. Just like that. So mm. it's, it's been a way to make sure that, well, honestly, both of us <laughs> felt frustration because we would have clients, prospective clients come to us. They'd 
set up a call and they desperately need our help. And the one thing that stopped them was money. Mm -hmm. So that gets a little defeating, not only for them, but for us as practitioners to know that there are mm. so many people who desperately need us, but that's the obstacle. So this was our solution to mm. that, just to find that, that middle ground. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, it's brand new. Um, our hope though, our vision is mm -hmm. that it might eventually be a place where your medical doctor or your naturopathic doctor or your osteopathic doctor will say, Hey, go join this free group because they can help you implement all the things I'm telling you I want you to do. So when yeah. you need your hand held about the diet changes and you need mm -hmm. help shopping and stocking your pantry and, and, yeah. you know, hacking your sleep. And mm. this is a place where you can get that. Right. Yeah. So we're hopeful that this is going to end up being a very collaborative space mm. where we're providing mm. a service, not only to, you know, just people who are struggling with thyroid issues or, or chronic health issues in general, but we're providing a service to practitioners out there, medical practitioners out there who just don't have the time and the resources to yeah. really help their patients the way they want to. We all want the same things. We yeah. all want our patients and clients to get healthy, right? And to get their lives yeah. back. Look, and I think that, I mean, that's part of having that team approach, isn't it? Right. And, and I love that idea because. I mean, in part, that's partly, well, it's in part why I wrote my book the way I did, because I think there's no, if you go see your functional health practitioner or holistic doctor or naturopath and they say, well, you're going to have to make some changes to your diet, you have to reduce some toxins, you're going to have to manage your stress, you're going to, you know, and then they, it's not good value as a patient for you to then sit with them for the next hour and say, well, how do I actually do that? Right. But, well, you know, for 30 bucks, you can buy my book and it all spells it out for you. <laughs> and then right. if you need extra help, you know, That's then right. there's places like the Functional Health Alliance right. or, you know, I've got a kickstart course coming up and all those sorts of, like, there's lots of help. There is yeah. help. So I think if you're listening and you feel like you're not sure how to do it, yeah, go join Whitney's Functional Health Alliance and get some help. Buy a copy of my book. Get some of those resources yes. because I think that, you know, you – your medical doctors and your, you know, your, you, you want those experts, you want to get the best value out of those experts. Yes. And part of getting the best value is getting help from um, better value people, you know, like, um, you know, or resources to implement yeah. what they're telling you. You want to get that. Yeah. I think it comes from, like I used to be a lawyer and I used to say to my clients, if you just need to vent, if you like, and I, I worked in family law and personal injury law, like, and there's a lot of venting that needs to go on when you're in sure. pain and your marriage is broken down. But I said, if you just need to vent, find a friend because I'm charging you for every six minutes at right. hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour for you to vent. Right. Talk to me when you've got a legal question and I'll listen to your vent, but you're going to be paying for it. Yes. So if you just want to vent, find a friend. Find a counsellor, find someone else to listen to your vent because it's not good value for you to vent to me. Right. But I'll charge you for it if you want. <laughs> and yeah, so I exactly. think that's, yeah, but because I, you know, that's what I have to do. I'm spending time, like it's a time for money kind of profession. So, uh, yeah. and I think it's the same in this space. So if you're spending $400 an hour to see a, you know, integrative doctor, don't ask them what brand gluten-free product to buy from the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that you're filling yeah. that gap, you know, or one of, Thanks. you know, it's one a of way those of filling gaps. that gap. Yeah. yeah. And also, even if you have uh, great resources like your book and, and other books, sometimes knowing what to do, doesn't uh -huh. necessarily mean you're able to execute completely that. Great. Yeah. Because that yeah. takes accountability. It takes support. Mm -hmm. It takes 
people yeah. inspiring you when you're down and letting you know it's okay. I've been there. I I know yeah. what you're doing. I know the way out. Hang in there. You yeah. know, th that is pretty critical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah. And that's where that sort of platform, like you've yeah. just described, you're, you're doing is that because we need a team. We need support. We need this team. is hard. Living with living with a thyroid condition is hard and it doesn't it end, you know, and sometimes you'll feel fantastic and other times you won't. And so we need to have people in our corner. Yeah. Yep. And we a variety sure of people. So I love that. So I'll make sure I link um, the, you know, the link to the Functional Health Alliance Great. in the, sh in the show notes. So, uh, but you've, you've already given the web address and if people want to connect with you or work with you, are you still taking individual clients as well? Whitney? Yes. I, I take one to two private clients a month for my main program, which is a, a six mm -hmm. to eight month program. And then I have another smaller program that I might take three or four clients a month. I really limit okay. because um, in my in my main program I give unlimited sessions, so it's like unlimited Voxer, unlimited messaging. You could theoretically be zooming with me every day if I had space on my calendar. So it's a very intensive way of coaching. So mm -hmm. I, I really do limit the numbers that I I bring in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, well, that that's also about you managing your time and right. energy and health too. Right. <laughs> I think sometimes we forget that we have to manage our, you know, our time and health and energy as well. Um, what I didn't ask before, I just want, maybe this is sort of one last question um, before we wrap it up is when we're talking about individuals working on their own yes. um, or, you know, or then with the support of something like the Functional Health Alliance, can, can they access any of these testing outside of working with a practitioner? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes mm. they can pay for them directly. Usually there's a big markup if they do. Uh -huh. but there are labs okay. out there that'll, that are consumer, you know, allow consumers to purchase. Mm. The problem is that getting your results doesn't necessarily mean you know what to do with yeah, those you're results. Be, you're still going to be able to interpret them. It's just like, right. like paying for your full thyroid panel. Yeah, that can be helpful because if you can't get a doctor to refer you for one, you need it. Yeah. But, yeah, you still need help interpreting it. Yeah. And yeah. not only that, but if you need three or four different labs, which most people mm. do, and then you get those results, you also need to be able to see the overlap and the connections and the correlations between – the lab results and your symptoms and your health history. So, so you do need mm. a professional that can think critically about these things. It's not enough just to get the results. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's working one-on-one -on -one is, is really yeah. important for that. But if you really are on your own, I mean, there's just so much you can do as you know, with diet and lifestyle changes, mm. yep. they can, make 60% improvement, right? Sometimes 80% improvement in your, in your adverse symptoms. So, yeah. um, just making so you can sure do that, that without any testing. <laughs> You're that's not right. Gonna, that's right. You might not get the level of detail, but I, I find that like I'm uh, in about a week starting my next um, round of what I call kickstart your thyroid friendly yeah. lifestyle. And predominantly it's mindset and diet. Yeah. And I'm always amazed and I shouldn't be amazed, but 30 days of eating a strict paleo diet, that's what yes. I operate around. It, it's remarkable the changes that people see. That's right. Incredible actually. And I shouldn't be surprised because I've been doing it for years, but I was like, yeah, food is powerful. It's <laughs> it so really powerful. And then you so, add on top of that, getting eight to nine hours of sleep. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing a couple yep. of things every day to manage your stress, meditate for five mm -hmm. minutes or do some tapping mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, appropriate movement throughout the day. I mean, these are so simple um, and so transformative. Yeah. Yeah. So know that if you're listening and you're not, you know, not in a position to, you know, go down the 
investigative path there are still lots of things that you can do right. go listen to back to more podcasts you know like i've got stuff there's there's heaps of stuff <laughs> like that's yes. what really what i talk about is the is the lifestyle things because i think well i feel like i certainly haven't done it all but i don't talk about things i certainly everything in the book i've tried like i, I don't talk about things i don't do yeah and I've tried a lot. I've been at this for 25 years. <laughs> so, you know, it, it there's a lot and some things work at some time and not others, but there's so many things you can do. There's always hope, you know, there's always something you can try. Absolutely. Um, and there's always hope. And, and so, I, you know, I love that whether really whichever avenue you take or whatever your stage of life you're in, there are things you can, you can do. Um, Yes. To feel better, <laughs> but don't just take your medication and think that's going to solve everything because right. it's not, it's part of the part of that solution. Right. Yeah. And also I think one, one final thing to remember is that healing isn't a straight trajectory, right? Oh, yeah. It's an up Point. and down. Um, and that's just the way it goes. And it, it, it's easy to feel really good when you're in the, those moments where you're just feeling at the top of your game. But when you're in one of those dips, the mantra that I always, that comes back to me is this too shall pass. This too shall pass. It always does. Yeah. It always it does. passes yeah. and you always get an upswing. So no matter where you are in your journey, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, yeah. Yeah. Look, we could probably talk for for hours. <laughs> but I, I think that's a really nice way to, to wrap it up because it will pass and other mm -hmm. things, you know, come up and, you know, but, but I think if you can take something from this conversation, I think it is, you know, the, the more you can reflect and even just reflecting and looking back at your health history and your thyroid story. Yeah. Um, you know, like I've written a little, I don't know, a book about how to write your own thyroid story. I haven't really released it yet. I'm not quite sure how to release oh, cool. it. <laughs> I haven't kind of done it, but you know, it's that a lot of it is this looking back and connecting the dots. And then if you can add in all the, you know, the testing and working with someone like you and, you know, it's the future is bright. So, so have, yes, it know, is. Have, yeah, the future is bright. Yes. Uh, Whitney, I know, um, so functional health Alliance, we're, um, you're, you're on Instagram and YouTube as well. Do you want to just quickly say where to connect with you there? I'll make sure I put yeah. all the links, but sometimes people are just listening and sure. you know, don't want to go and look at the notes. Really across all social media, it's Whitney Morgan Nutrition. So pretty easy, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, and YouTube channel. And then my website, same thing, Whitney Morgan Nutrition. Or you can shorten it up to Morgan Nutrition. That'll work too. Uh huh. Excellent, excellent. Well, and and I know too. Like I, I'm on your mailing list. You provide great information in your email. Oh, so thanks. you know, get you know, get connected with Whitney because she really Thank does. You. Like I, li I like that. You know, the science nerdy part of what you bring to the thyroid table too. And and, and what I like about you, and you'll really get this if you go back to listen to episode 40, is you know nonsense. Like you say it how it is. You're not going to sugarcoat things, but you do, you know, I don't mean, I mean, you, you know, if, yeah, you don't sugarcoat things. And I think sometimes we need that. We need that yeah. strong, that strong voice because we're always looking for an out. And I think... <laughs> Um, well, we are. <laughs> Tell oh, me what, what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, but I really respect yeah. that about about you. And I, 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 you. I think you do it in a nice way. I'm not saying that you know, but um, but you do. You don't hold back, and I think that's really important. And uh, I, I really appreciate that about what I see of you online. So, so thank oh, you for thank you being you in uh, your world and in our thyroid. Space. Well, and back at you. Thank you so much for all you do in the thyroid space. You're definitely an inspiration. I just love watching everything that comes over Instagram and your podcast episodes. You really are a bright light. So I really appreciate you. The information presented and discussed in this podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease and should not be used as a substitute for proper advice from a qualified professional.